From the day it opened in 1915, the Fort Langley CN station was a busy place. People, freight, even sheep came through here. Passenger service ended in the early 1980s. The station was moved down the tracks and restored by the Langley Heritage Society. The CN station remains a powerful connection to our past. Take this dusty old trunk, for example. It's how Lois Bowling moved her belongings from England. She married Canadian air gunner Ross Bowling during the war. When she stepped off the train in 1946, Lois became the first British war bride to arrive in Langley, to a new life in a new country. It was a challenge for this English city girl. She had a severe allergy to hay, but she was in love. They were inseparable. My name's Helen Williams, and I work here at the Fort Langley CN Station. The station was built in 1915, and what you find me sitting in is the station agent's office. Here you'll find all forms of communication at the early days. Mail was delivered here. Mail was also then uh, the community could come pick up their mail. They would also be able to pay to have communication via a telegraph sent. Uh, to a family member. Those uh, were used as immediate communication to let someone know of a birth, a death, and also to receive communication from overseas. It actually um, is the result of uh, a man by the name of Samuel uh, Morse. He did not get the message that his wife had died. And as a result of that, he wanted to create a device that uh, enabled someone to have instant communication. So he started this in the 1830s. He in turn gathered uh, some other inventors that assisted him and by 1836 he had created a device similar uh, to this and he then didn't know how to transmit a message. He had, you know, the sound could go across but how could anyone understand what was being, trans what, was, what the message was? So he then went about and developed Morse code and the Morse code is a symbol of dashes and dots. And by uh, stringing cable, telegraphed cable, um, and then at the other end, if there was a receiver, the message could be sent and the transmitter could decode what each dash and uh, dot meant. And it was uh, in 1844 that the very first message he did send. We're very fortunate to have this uh, Canadian National Telegram it uh, is dated March 7th of 1945, so we know that the uh, Second World War was still ongoing. It is addressed to a Mrs. J.C. McGowan, who lived in uh, Vancouver on West 19th. And the message says, All my love, dearest, all well and safe, anxiety unnecessary, and it is signed J. McGowan. We assume this is a soldier at time of war. He is sending this message to relieve his wife uh, of anything possibly she may have heard in the news, to say uh, in the radio rather at that time, and um, to let her know uh, he is safe and sound. It's very brief um, because each word, each letter costs money, so these messages were brief. It would have been easily received in a station such as this and the station agent, uh, that was one of his uh, jobs, often after, after uh, work or actually at noon hour to deliver messages that were delivered, that were transmitted to individuals in the community. We could very well have been a message that uh, Lois Bowling had sent from England to her husband, her uh, husband that she had married, uh, that when she was going to arrive in Fort Langley and step off the train on this exact platform. CN Station was the place to be. Especially when big events like the Royal Tour of 1939 happened. King George and Queen Elizabeth's train did a slow crawl through Fort Langley. Even a community band was there to welcome them. A dozen years later, 25-year-old Princess Elizabeth and her husband Philip whistle-stopped at Fort Langley. Three months later, she would become Queen. There's lots to see while visiting the CN station in Fort Langley, and you just might want to become a volunteer. You will meet people from all over the world here in a season from Victoria Day to Thanksgiving. We have well over 10,000 people come in. That's just when we're open. 
my volunteers, there's only one that really is a tra train enthusiast and knows everything that you can ever think to ask. But all the people that have come and stay on here as volunteers, they enjoy talking to people, they love sharing the history of the station. Um, most of the individuals live right here in Langley, some right in Fort Langley. And they just like being able to tell people what the station represented, what the uh, station agent did here, and communicating uh, from uh, people from, as I say, all over the world, and they enjoy it.